Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. Today, we actually start implementing the automatic wave system. So I'm not going to touch on anything, just press play. And as you guys can tell, we now spawn a little bit of enemies. This is wave 1. They are fairly easy to kill. And it just goes on like that. So it spawns automatically. We switch from wave 1 to wave 2. And then all the enemy gets a little bit stronger. They all get different... Um... Well, values on their damage and on their hit point. And you also have the chance of like spawning some harder enemies as well. So that's what we're doing today. We're just starting to implement the automatic system. And yeah, so guys, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with today's episode. We are actually going to go inside of our game manager and start coding the automatic system, the automatic spawning system. You know how we have this A button to actually start spawning enemy? We need to get rid of that eventually because there's no such thing as a A button on the mobile phone. And um, of course, we don't want to be like spawning stuff on request. We want it to be some kind of challenge that uh, e uh, the AI of the game gives us. So it's not really an AI but you get the idea in the update now we are going to get rid of this and we will now actually spawn this automatically so in the last episode we actually created a uh, spawn information structure that we haven't used just yet and today we're actually going to do just that so inside of our game manager I'm going to include the collection generic so I can start using lists and we're gonna be keeping track of what to spawn inside of a private list of a spawn information. Uh, let's call this one to spawn. And let's also instantiate it right here. Okay, so we got this private list spawn information. We instantiate it right away. Now, um, every time we have a new wave starting, every time we're starting a new level, let's go and actually generate the whole thing. So I will do private void generate spawn list int wave level so here is what I had in mind so we're gonna start by clearing the actual spawn list like this to spawn dot clear and once we clear it I'm going to declare a float that I'll call delay and this is going to be the time um, this is this is going to be the float that I'll use to actually know is this ready to spawn now here is what I'm going to do int amount to spawn the amount of enemy to spawn is going to equal 10 for every single wave. But then we're gonna do plus cast as the int current wave divided by a certain number, so maybe 2.5, like this. So what this is going to give us is every single 2.5 levels, we are going to add a new enemy to this number. So say, um, well, just assume that it was every level. In this case, at level 1, we would get 10 enemy, level 2 would get 11, level 3 would get 12, and so on. But I, I like to actually put that on this, uh, an actual bigger number. So for the first 3 level, it is going to be 10 enemies. Then after that, we get 11 starting from there, and it just keeps going up and up. And um, let me actually put that inside of a const value. So I'll go up here, do a private const float additional enemy um, level delta that will do the job so 2.5 in this case oh cons two errors okay I'm getting good at typing <laughs> so this is going to be it I'll be replacing my 2.5 by that and this is this is going to give us the amount of enemy to spawn now we can do a for loop in that so for int i is equal to zero as long as i is smaller than the amount of, of um, enemies to spawn we do i plus plus which is going to give us our for loop for the amount of enemies we have. So every time we want to create a new enemy to spawn, we are going to declare a spawn information, maybe si, is equal to a new spawn information. Now we're going to be setting the time difficulty and also, um, do we have to set the type? We don't, act well, yeah, we actually do have to set the type. Okay, so this is going to get a little bit confusing at this point. So. Let's start with the time, right? So si.time is equal delay, in this case 0, plus equal. So I'm going to do my plus equal operation in the same exact line. Um, you could also assume, well, 
if this confused you, you can also be putting it up here. So delay plus equals something. Or actually the order I have it in right now is it would be below the actual SI call, SI.time call. So on plus equal, we're going to be doing, say, current wave modulo 5 times minus 0.1f. And that's pretty much it for the time. Now, as far as the difficulty goes, we're going to do current difficulty, which we don't have, by the way. So um, I'm just going to write current difficulty like this, and we're going to be turning this into a property so public difficulty current difficulty set get and in the start let's actually set this to medium why not so difficulty dot medium this is going to be changed from the um, hub scene whenever we actually can do that but right now let's stick to this so current difficulty we put it here and I'd also like to do something, like just add a little bit of random in the game. Let's do it if random.value, if it's smaller than 0. Point, uh, smaller or equal than 0 0.05, let's do si.difficulty plus equal 1. So there's a 5% chance that the enemy that, that you're trying to spawn is actually going to be stronger. That's just a little bit of... Um, I don't know why I did that actually, just for fun. <laughs> so. You're gonna have like a five percent chance that the enemy is a lot stronger than it should be. Just to add a little bit spice to this, and now this is where I'm confused, and I don't know which type of enemy we should be spawning. Um, I am just going to put the enemy type tiny for now, and we can come back to this later on. Where I think we're actually going to use some kind of um, table, and we're gonna be determining what kind of enemy, like what percentage of chances. Do we have to get a fast or a tough enemy? But let's let's say actually leave that on um, tiny for now, and we can finally, after everything is done, we can finally say si dot add. Oh, sorry, not that. Two spawn dot add, and we add si. Now this is our generate spawn list. We use the wave level. Do we actually use the wave level? We don't. I'm sorry. We're going to be using the wave level. So, um. Do we actually need to use that wave level? We can actually only use the current wave. But since we put it in parameter up here, let's actually change current wave for wave level. So these two guys here. Okay. What else do we need to do now? So we got our generate spawn list. Now we need to actually span our things. So in our update, we are going to do we are going to do say we need to know if we're in a current wave right now if we're actually playing a wave or I don't think we actually need I think we can just simply jump into the game so let's try that to spawn let's do if to spawn at the index zero you know what we're gonna be storing that sorry we're gonna be storing that inside of a span information so span information si is equal to to spawn at the index 0, so always the first one. So if si is not equal to null, so if there is still enemies to spawn, we're going to be doing if si.time is bigger, actually you know what, if time.time .time minus last wave is bigger than si.time then we can go ahead and just spawn this enemy so spawn manager.instance spawn enemy and then we spawn this at si.type and si.difficulty like this and now we need the last wave so let's change that for last wave time and we are going to be making this a private float. So private float, last wave time. Whenever we actually generate a spawn list, we are going to say last wave time is equal to time dot time. All right. So that is only if we get something. If we do get something, if we do spawn an enemy, we gotta be removing removing it from the list. So um, to spawn. Dot remove and we remove si 
Now this way, at one point, this is going to be null. So this object right here is going to be null, and that means that means the wave uh, is done spawning. The wave might not be done killing, but it's actually done spawning. So done spawning wave, which is going to be a function that we are going to put right now, actually. Private void done spawning wave, and let's just do for now a debug.log. We're done spawning the wave. Current wave plus plus. And we could actually go ahead and just generate a new spawn list. Why not? Um, that being done, I'll put the current wave in here. And I'll also put this call inside of the start. So when we launch the game, we can actually, you know, um, have some enemy spawning. So I haven't tested out this logic, hopefully everything works. There seemed to be an error out here. Okay, so it does not know if this is null. Um, it doesn't know what kind of object this is in the first place, so I gotta be saying something else. Okay, so since this is a structure, I can't really just say um, as, as i equal equal to null. So what we're gonna be doing instead to check if there is an object or not, is we are actually going to take the two spawn and we'll do a two count we'll do a count on it. So if the count is not equal to zero, that means there is an object and this actually is worth something. And I'll actually put it inside of here. So if there's an object inside of the list, we grab that very object. And this is it, I guess. So we grab that object, we try to spawn it. If we do spawn it, we remove it from the list, and then at one point, this is going to be equal to null, so we'll, do, we'll um, actually call the done spawning wave. Having that said, we should have no more problem with this. Run the preloader and actually have a look at what we get inside of the game. And you know what, before we actually get started, let me just remove that debug.log because it's getting fairly annoying. I'll command it out. Then here we go we are going to do the spawning test so we definitely have an error here <laughs> it's kinda cool though but uh, it's not gonna work so what exactly could be our problem right now I believe that we have an issue with the whole spawning thing um, is there a way to actually tell which wave we are, we are on right now oh well in our debug.log we actually finished spawning 52 different waves so if I just take a look at this again, and we're going to try to debug from there. As you can tell, it goes pretty fast. And um, I think we only have an error in our in our uh, timing. So if we go over to the, the game manager, and we go under the generate spawn list, Where is our delay? So that's the delay thing. That's what is not working right now. So let's do a debug dot log delay. I'd like to actually see the delay of this. And I'm going to go back inside of the um, the down spawning wave and comment this one out. So we don't actually spawn multiple wave. We only spawn one at the very beginning. Okay, so this is our delay right here. It does 0, minus 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 9, and this is just not going to work because it goes in a order that we can't really follow. So if we go back under this and we actually try changing this up a little bit. All right, so our error is about here. We need to actually add a, um, a base value in between, like, say, and between every spawn, we should have a base value of, say, we wait for 1.5 seconds or something like that. So I'm going to go up here, do another const, so private float const, delay in between spawns. And I'll put that on, say, 1.5. Now, what is the intended purpose of the rest of the line over here is so every, every five wave, we actually go back to this... Um, normal value, we just always increment by delay in between spawns. But every time we get, say, to the, the fourth level, I want this to be spawning faster. I want this to be a little bit more complicated. It goes a little bit faster, and then at the fifth one, 
we go back to a slower pace. And it's just to give some kind of uh, diversity to the game. It's not really needed, but I am going to put the delay in between spawn here and actually try to run this now. And let's actually see what kind of result we get in the game. So if we take a look down here, we spawn an enemy at zero, that's fine, that's the first second of the wave. Then we spawn one at 1.4 seconds after the wave has started. Then 2.8, 4.2, 5.6, 7, 8, blah blah and so on. So this is again a result we get, it might be a little bit too slow, it's actually fine I think. And what difficulty are we on? We are on um, medium, which is way too hard, <laughs> but you get the idea. So we spawn every single 1.5 seconds. And if we were on wave 2, we would spawn on every 1.3 seconds actually. And on wave 1 we actually do 1.4 seconds. Okay, so I'm a little bit confused with my maths, but um, it does the actual thing I wanted to do. I just have to be uh, balancing this a little bit better. So I believe this is fine if we run on the actual difficulty and easier difficulty. So if we go over to the game manager, we put this on easy and actually try to run this. I think we can actually beat, well, at least the first level just by staying there and not doing anything. So these enemy, they all have one HP each. Should not be too hard to defeat. And you know, um, when we defeat an enemy, a little bit later on, we're gonna have some kind of currency drop. We can buy stuff with that, buy some levels, and make this way easier. So that first wave works. Let's go ahead and try, just go ahead and try to uh, chain this with the second wave. So we're gonna be removing this comment. And we're gonna be hitting play. So you're gonna see as soon as the first wave is done, the second wave should start spawning right away and it's going to be a little bit faster. So in between the spawn there is going to be 0 0.10 uh, second faster. And I don't know if you saw that but we actually got a crit a little bit earlier. And what is this? Oh that was a uh, bigger enemy. Another crit here. So we got the 5% chance um, to spawn a bigger enemy and it actually did happen here. What else? We are now on the second wave and it's getting a little bit tougher already. <laughs> so I think we're going to have to give ourselves some goal to actually beat this. Let's actually cheat a little bit. Go under the currency goal and we are going to give ourselves, let's go ahead and just do a small number, maybe 10,000. That's not so small, but still. We are going to bump up the speed. So let's buy some speed values. We attack faster. Let's also give ourselves some hit point. And do we need regen? Uh, let's not take regen, just more speed. Okay. This is actually cool. Now at one point, at level 3, when we hit the um, the third wave, the enemy should now have 2 HP each, so... Any time now, we should actually see these enemy have 2 HP each. Here we go, so that's a one with 2 HP, that's... oh no, that was just a tough one, <laughs> my bad. And this guy has 2 HP, okay, so now all of them they have 2 HP, that means we enter the wave number 3. And it just keeps on going like this and we actually start um, having some bigger values. So that is actually pretty much it. Now I like to do something, um, I like to actually add some kind of delay in between the waves so we can actually take a breath. But I'll be doing this in the next few episodes guys, but for now I think we had I think we created something great here and we can actually build on top of it. So guys, I hope you guys learned something. We are going to remove these debug.log. Um, I hope you guys learned something. If you have any co uh, question or comment, you can leave them in the comment section below or on my Facebook page. Other than that, please subscribe for more tutorials like these and I will see you guys in the next episode.